you have three options for solving problems with kids. Those three options are called plan A, plan B, and plan C. What I've done here is I've taken the many different ways in which adults deal with problems with kids and I've divided them. I've, split, I've, I've categorized them into three options, A, B, C. By the way, you're only using two of these options in this model. The popular one is only up there because it's popular. But you're not gonna be using the popular one very often when you're implementing this model. Notice it says unsolved at the top, underlined. That's because if a problem isn't unsolved, you don't need a plan. It's not an unmet expectation. If a kid is doing his homework as well and as often as you'd like him to, you don't need a plan. It's not an unsolved problem. It's a met expectation. No plan needed. If a kid is um, sitting next to Timmy during circle time as well and as often as you'd like him to, you don't need a plan. It's not an unsolved problem. It's a met expectation. No plan needed. You only need the plans if you have an unmet expectation. So I just want to make sure I'm being crystal clear here. Do you still have expectations? Of course you still have expectations. The big question is, what are you doing with the ones the kid is having difficulty meeting? The three plans are called A, B, and C. The two you're using in this model are B and C. A is up there only because it's popular. Plan C is where you are setting aside a particular expectation, at least for now. Many people hear that and they think giving in. Nope, there's no giving in in the entire model. Giving up, there's no giving up in the entire model. Prioritizing, yes, there is prioritizing in this model. Mm. Plan C are the unsolved problems you have consciously, deliberately, and proactively decided, we're dropping that expectation for that kid right now. We don't even expect him to meet it. Not only is that not giving in, not only is that not giving up, that is brilliant. That's prioritizing. In the very volatile, unstable, reactive kids that I've been working with for 40 plus years, Plan C is also stabilizing because any expectation you have removed from the kid's radar screen for now will not set in motion an a challenging episode because it's gone for now. Forever? Nope. For now. When will it come back again? After we've solved some of our higher priority unsolved problems. Let me make you feel slightly better about Plan C. This always makes people feel better about Plan C because people don't like dropping expectations. He's not meeting the expectation anyway. So now you have two options. You can still put the expectation on the kid, have the kid lose his mind, everything that happens next, or make it official. He doesn't have to meet the expectation right now. That leaves us with only two others, A and B. Both represent a way to solve a problem with a kid. Just one huge difference between them. With plan A, you're solving the problem unilaterally. With plan B, you're solving problems collaboratively. How are you solving problems in this model? Collaboratively. Plan B. Mm. Are we allergic to plan A in this model? Nope, not allergic. We just don't think it's a very good idea. But if a kid is about to dart in front of a speeding car in a parking lot, you're not using plan C. You're not saying, you know, we got bigger fish to fry here, so. You're not doing plan B, it's too late. I've noticed you're about, too late. You're doing plan A. You yank on the kid's arm, you save his life. If he blows up, so be it, you saved his life. But if three weeks later that kid has now darted in front of a speeding car in a parking lot 17 additional times, and you've yanked 17 additional times, yeah, I'll agree with you. Plan A is working at saving that kid's life, but I'll also tell you that plan A is not working at solving that problem you're gonna need a different plan. And that plan is either B or C. If it's C, that kid's not gonna be finding his, himself in that parking lot anytime soon. If it's plan B, we're gonna be solving that problem with that kid so we can find out what's so hard for that kid about parking lots and solve it. One of the biggest downsides of plan A Plan A causes challenging episodes in challenging kids. 
Here I thought we were trying to reduce challenging episodes. What if there was a way to solve the problem with the kid that didn't involve power? Power causes conflict. Power causes kids to lose their mind, but was even more effective at getting the problem solved. Collaboration brings people together. I'm choosing the other way, plan B. Solving a problem collaboratively involves three steps. Those three steps are called the empathy step, the define adult concern step, the invitation step. The names of the steps don't actually matter very much. The ingredients of the steps matter a great deal. What is the main ingredient of the empathy step? Information gathering. Gathering information from the student so that you can understand what's making it hard for that kid to meet the expectation that you're doing plan B on right now. As I always say, kids have information we badly need. Information about what's hard. Information about what's getting in the kid's way. The kid's concern, perspective, point of view. If we do not get that information, the kid's concern will still be unknown, the kid's concern will remain unaddressed, and this problem will remain unsolved. You need info. The empathy step is where you're gonna get it. The define it all concern step is where you are entering your concern into consideration. The very same concern that might previously have led you into plan A is now leading you into plan B. Same concern. Completely different approach to getting it addressed. Finally, the invitation. This is where you and the kid are collaborating on a solution, but a solution that must meet two criteria. Gotta be realistic. Both parties got to be able to do what they're agreeing to do. Got to be mutually satisfactory, meaning the solution truly addresses the concerns of both parties. Here's what I've been saying a lot lately, and world history bears me out on it. If the solution is not realistic and mutually satisfactory, I promise you this problem is still unsolved.